Yes, I, I do believe we are in the midst of a, uh, a wave of populism and uh, a resurgence of, of far-right ideas. And that's had many different contributing factors essentially driving it. The 2008 financial crash, the failure of various neoliberal governments to deliver on their promises, essentially the, the co-option of youth movements and internet culture to get into the spaces where people weren't reaching, to get to the spaces where there were disaffected kids. The far right sort of you know, itself operates somewhat like a virus. It sort of hunts and seeks out vulnerable bodies and minds uh, to spread its interests. Uh, and it does so particularly in times of great fear, anxiety and uncertainty. Uh, the kind of conspiracies we're seeing is that um, uh, they accuse Ch the Chinese government of manufacturing the virus in one of its biological weapons factories. The Democratic Party invented it to prevent US President Donald Trump's uh, re-election or the United Nations is somehow behind it to pacify and control the world's population. And if you go back to the, uh, the early 20th century and you look at um, cartoons in magazines and newspapers and post, you know, posters put up by various movements across the United States and Australia, it's the same kind of thing. It's the Chinese bring the plague. Some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus, it's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. Well, I think China is to blame because the culture where people eat bats and snakes and dogs and things like that. Again, it's astonishing to see Trump bring these things back to sort of co-opt these same sort of messages. So when Trump uh, called uh, that it was a plot to undermine his presidency and that the, the, the virus was no worse than the flu, uh, Fox News went to work by by echoing those similar claims. This virus should be compared to the flu because at worst, at worst, worst case scenario, it could be the flu. This is yet another attempt to impeach the president. I feel like the more I learn about this, the less there is to worry about. I was about to say the same thing. You know, a recent poll came out in The Atlantic showing that only 35% of Republicans expressed concern about the virus, which has dampened and effects or stymied effort, efforts by um, healthcare officials to uh, encourage social distancing and uh, self-isolation measures. Populist movements see what happens after a pandemic and say, look, we, we have our chance to grab more. We have our chance to grab um, a, a bigger slice of the pie. Um, in fact, I think sometimes pandemics almost make populism movement stronger. So I don't think they're incompatible. I think they're, um, I think we've got to be on our guard. Perhaps you could sort of take it on the chin, take it all in one, in one go and allow the disease as it were to, to move through the, the population. Not to suppress it completely. Also, because most people, the vast majority of people get a mild illness to build up some degree of herd immunity as well so that more people are immune to this disease. In terms of building up a herd immunity within the UK, what, I mean, what sort of percentage of people need to have contracted the virus? Probably about 60% or so. Herd immunity, uh, as we explained very early on when Robert Peston first mentioned it, March the 12th, I think, it is a biological concept. It happens with, it's only mentioned in the literature of 50 years in alliance with a vaccine. And what it means is that individuals get protection if a large percentage of the population is immunized, sometimes by infection, sometimes by mainly by vaccination, by 90%. This idea of herd immunity of 60% of the population is the most bizarre introduction into British policy. It's in no other country, though, it looks like Sweden might have picked it up too, and, and the Netherlands, but it's, it is, there's no basis for it in when it comes for a new virus. I've heard immunity specifically relates to inculcating a population against a disease through vaccination. It's not necessarily the survival of the fittest. If you get it, you get it, you gain an immunity. Nobody can deal with a crisis on this scale. And so the role of government becomes crucial. Now, our particular government have denigrated experts. It is not as bad as Trump as a populist government, but well on that way there, to a kind of will to power, to deliver obfuscation of the facts. We know they lied about their election spending. We know that vote leave, which runs the government effectively, Dominic Cummings, 
Gove and Johnson lied in their ads about Turkey coming and about 350 million for the NHS. And there's a huge paradox here, which is not just science which they rely on, it's the NHS. I think the people in this country have had enough of experts with uh, organisations from acronyms the people of this saying... people have had saying, enough of experts. And this experts thing, well, you know, I don't want Michael Gove doing brain surgery on me. It matters the expertise of a brain surgeon. Uh, and likewise of an epidemiologist or a good economist. So, you know, much regretted and innocent people lose their lives. But, you know, nature does have a way of reminding us sometimes that it's bigger than us.